This is part two of my productivity workflow. If you haven't seen part one, I'm not sure how you found this video, but go back to part one and watch the entire playlist in order. Now, what I'm discussing here is my desk setup. And it's really important that if you're working at your desk, that your actual space that you're working in is a reflection of your mind. You don't wanna have papers lying around or anything that could provide a source of distraction, pulling your attention away from that laser-like focus on the thing that you're supposed to be doing. Now, if you have stuff like papers or anything that's reminding you of open loops in your brain, they're just gonna sit and provide this attention residue or this sense of like, oh, but you really should get around to doing that at some point, And it's gonna pull you away from the task at hand. So I'm gonna show you what my desk setup looks like here. This is my simple and affordable desk setup. A lot of YouTubers will talk about their desk setups and you look into it and it's like $50,000 worth of kit. Everything on here you can get for two to 300 pounds in total. So to start with, this is some kitchen surface that I've had reshaped to fit into the windowsill so that I can film and work in natural light. Would definitely recommend working in natural light, it's just so much better for your well-being don't feel like you're just working in the goblin hole. This is a Pomodoro timer. It's an hour on here. I prefer to work in chunks of one hour and it gives you a nice visual representation of how far into the block you are. Then we've got this laptop stand. So this adjusts from sitting to standing, it allows you to vary your posture nicely. This is a wire tidy, so little rubber things that can keep them slightly tidier. If you want to have one fewer wires, then rather than using a USB-C for your external monitor, you can use Apple TV, but I'm not as much of a fan because it's a little bit more laggy and the quality is not as good. Obviously, MacBook, nothing more needs to be said about that. Um, if you're not using a Mac, then stop watching this video, go to apple.com, go and buy a Mac. This is the Yeti. So this is the microphone that I use for recording and filming attached to a goose stand. That's just to minimize the space that it takes, takes up on the desk, but it also stops um, transmitting of taps and things through the desk too. Speaking of space saving, this is the BenQ desk lamp and I am a complete convert. So much better than having a physical desk lamp. Big space saver, you can just turn it on and off like that. You can adjust the temperature and the color and it doesn't glare off the screen as well. Obviously it's daytime so you can't really see what it does here, but I'll show you what it looks like in the dark. Oh look, it's suddenly nighttime. So just to demonstrate the desk lamp, so we can turn it on like that and it really kicks off quite a decent amount of light. Here you can adjust the temperature from cool to warm, depending on what time of day it is. So you're not having as much blue light exposure to disrupt your sleep. You can also adjust the brightness here as well and it cycles through. It also auto detects the amount of ambient light and adjusts it accordingly, as we can see from there. Well, it's dark, so you can't really see that, but it is adjusting the light, I promise. Now, final thing is this as an external monitor. I cannot overstate the importance of having one. It's equivalent to an increase in your working memory, and it means that you can then have like reference document on one side of the screen and the thing that you're working on on the other and it just really keeps you on track without having to constantly switch between things. This is the Bose Mini Soundlink. It's about 150 pounds and it is absolutely incredible. The sound quality and volume that it can produce for something of its size is brilliant and it's just the last speaker you'll ever need so definitely get a hold of one of them. Out of sight, out of mind is this wireless charger for your phone, but really it's better to just have your phone entirely out of the room when you're working. That'll really bump up your productivity. Finally, this is the desk chair that I use with this 20 pound lumbar support from Amazon. It is so comfortable. Usually I sit cross-legged when working seated here. And if you've seen my Posture 101 video, you'll know that there is no such thing as the perfect posture. It's more about varying your posture between different positions. You'll also know that Posture has a huge impact on your mindset and your mental state. So check that out in the description below. Next is the Mac productivity setup. 
Now, this is a quote just to lay the groundwork for this from Steve Jobs of the computer is the bicycle of the mind. I absolutely love this because it's just a symbol of the fact that we've taken our unique human skill to be able to build tools that amplify our ability. And what that does is it allows you to take the ideas or whatever capacity you have in yourself and amplify it with the power of a computer. And so it really, really makes sense to become great at using a computer so that there's a smooth flow between what's going on in your mind and what's coming out on the computer. And if it's used properly, it will amplify your output. Looking at what's the fastest thing on on Earth and humans got absolutely whipped by zebras and cheetahs and lions. And But the thing that won over the long distance was a human on a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> what we do is we create a tool and then we leverage that tool to gain a massive advantage. And it's something I see so often that people are just crap with computers and they're missing out on so many of these little opportunities for improving their efficiency globally. And the flip side is, if you don't take control of this, then you're at the mercy of lots of micro inefficiencies. And what they do is if you're waiting for a computer to do something, or if you're doing something the slightly slow way each time, that opens up a small window for distraction, where you go and try and pick up your phone or whatever else, and suddenly, boom, you're derailed, you're scrolling Instagram for 20 minutes, and you've just knacked your productivity for the day, both internally and externally. So the way I look at this is you see technology as prosthesis for your brain. And so it makes sense to have this perfect seamless flow between what's going on in your brain and being able to output it into the world. This is an amazing diagram. And this is from Tiago Forte. What this does is it's put all of the productivity ideas into a hierarchy. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, ah, that completely all fits together now. And it's the same kind of feeling as when you first saw the Eric Helms nutritional pyramid or the training pyramid, that you understand all the different component parts, but when they're placed together in a hierarchy and you can see how they fit together, the whole thing just makes sense. So on the bottom rung is digital fluency. It's what I've been saying all along, that if you are lacking in things like basic computer usage, web browsing, emails, keyboard shortcuts, digital calendars, password management, speed reading, time tracking, text expansion, like you're missing out on so much. Now, I'm not going to cover how to do that because I already have in my other series called Maximizing Your Productivity on a Mac, and that covers a full run through of Alfred as well. If you've not met Alfred, he is the love of my life. So you need to check that out as well. And once you have those in place, then suddenly you have accelerated your mind. So next we have the task management and workflow, being able to capture, clarify, organize, reflect, and engage. Those are the five steps in the getting things done system. And I'm going to cover my own interpretation of that to make it even simpler. Next up, we have habit behavior, habit and behavior change. So things like having a next action or a project list or a capture habit, followed by personal knowledge ma management, such as building your second brain. And then we have project management at the very top. Understanding that pyramid is really important to see how it all fits together. Next, we have quick search and quick entry. And there are a few apps that allow you to do this and basically go in and retrieve whatever you need within fractions of seconds to be able to pull out the data that you need at the time. This is why when you're fully plugged in, it becomes your external brain. And then you can use it to basically expand the capacity of your memory. It's not that you're relying on these things to substitute for that, but they are like prostheses. And then the more you are able to use them and dip in and out, the more they actually strengthen these connections in your brain, especially if you're doing more active recall. But we'll get to that in a minute. So some examples of this with Evernote, for example, Command J opens up Evernote, opens up the switcher, and you can just start typing fractions of words. It even detects typos and things to pull out a tagged or context relevant note that you're looking for. So this is how to retrieve something from your external brain. Next we have quick capture. So this is for adding in a task into your workflow that you might be mid task with something else and you wanna quickly just bang it into your list. You can just press commando, type in whatever task you need to do. So fix the nail in the fence, add it into admin, house maintenance, done. It's saved in the process. You can even add in a timestamp for when you want that to come up in the future. And then finally we have Alfred, which is command space. And this is like spotlight on steroids. And I just can't profess the benefits of Alfred enough. Uh, so really, you've just got to watch the full video on that to, to see why it's worth it. But it's absolutely the one bit of software that I would pay a hundred times for 
because of how much of a rocket ship and the amount of time that it saves for me. So covering those tools, we have Evernote, the external brain, Alfred, the all-in-one solution for everything and the love of my life, Better Touch tool, which I cover in the Mac productivity video, and TickTick. In the next video, I'm going to cover the specifics of how I use TickTick in the workflow and why that's my choice of app for workflow management and task management. All right, see you in the next video.